Hello, Sam Deniff here, Head of Public Sector and Defence for Copters. And today we are going to take a look at the brand new launch from Sky Hero, the Saijin Rover. Now Sky Hero at the moment are best known for the launch of their Loki 2 internal tactical drone. Now this was launched in conjunction with counter-terror and special firearms policing Europe-wide. The idea being to have a fully GPS-denied drone system that was collision tolerant, could be operated by firearms team, counter-terrorism teams, and other areas of policing and military, where there was no drones built specifically for that purpose with a military and defense pedigree. From there, Sky Hero have taken a look at what they can add to a fleet of hardware and software to give a full internal tactical capability. And this is where they started looking at developing a rover, or as they call it, an SUGV. That's a small unmanned ground vehicle. So this is where the Saijin rover comes in. And Sky Hero launched this to work alongside the drone to give a full solution. The reason this was developed was to give full situational awareness to ground troops and frontline officers in covert operations. And just like the drone, it was developed with some of the world's best counter-terror and firearms teams in terms of policing. So the technology is built on the same technology as the Loki 2. What you've got is something that operates off the exact same ground control station. You can operate up to four systems all within this one controller. That can be four drones, four rovers, or a combination of the two, which is what we're going to see now that something like this has been launched. So one of the first things you'll notice about the Saijin is the size. It's actually only 180 millimeters wide and 200 millimeters long. It also weighs less than two kilos in total. The idea with this is that it can be picked up easily and stored in a backpack. It can be clipped onto a belt, it can be stored in a pocket, taken off and then thrown into the environment it's going to be operated in. So that's why it needs to be as small and as portable as possible. The other big question we get asked with this is why doesn't it break and how is it so tough? And if you look at the system, you can see that it has these four fully rubber tires. This means it can be dropped from a height of up to six meters without suffering any damage. We've also tested it, and the manufacturer has, far beyond that capability, and it does it with no issues, but that's what it's rated to in terms of drop distance. The system can also be thrown in through windows, up to the top of staircases, driven down staircases, and it is so tough for pressure, we've actually driven a car, an SUV, over the rover, and then it's been absolutely fine to operate after that. So when we're talking about the sensors, the rover has two, one on each side of the Saijin. These are very similar to the sensors on the drone itself. Um, the main difference is that you have a 150 degree field of view. So that means if you're driving up to a door or up to a staircase, the sensors can see a full field of view from floor to ceiling. The other clever thing with this is if, if you do flip the rover at any time, when it reaches that 90 degree point, it will always know which way is front. So when it goes back down, it's not like the camera will then be facing the wrong way. The camera will switch and you'll always be looking forwards. So what kind of battery life can we expect from the side gym? Well, this now has a 120 minute endurance time and that's actually moving driving time. If you're stationary as a sentry, it has a 300 minute endurance. So that's five hours of the rover being able to sit in location with dimmable LEDs, with night vision sensors, uh, and with microphones built into the rover. So you can place it in a certain location, drive it to where you want it to go, leave it sat there, watch, listen, and wait for up to five hours. The Saijin also has built-in IR sensors. So on the top and bottom of the rover, there are IR beacons which can be turned on and off to allow ground troops to locate it or to light up an area. And there's also IR beacons on the front and back of the rover, which allows you to light up an area for the nighttime sensor to then pick up more detail in low light conditions. Now, one big feature of the rover, which can be overlooked in its simplicity, is the sound. When you're operating drones, you're used to very loud noises, especially internal operation. Now, the Loki 2 as a drone is brilliant for internal tactical use, but one thing it definitely isn't is covert. And that's where the Saijin can be used for anything where you don't want to make a lot of noise when you're entering a building. It's next to silent 
Uh, you really can't notice it, even if it's in the same room as you, and it can be there and it can be watching and listening uh, and feeding back all this information with no one having any knowledge that it's even in the area. So what about the connection between the rover and controller? Well, much like the drone, the connection is an analog AV signal, which is encrypted up to AES-256, which is becoming a bit of an industry standard in terms of encryption levels. The fee between the controller and the robot is fully scrambled by FPGA. This prevents any sort of lag or screen freezes. If you do lose signal or start to lose signal as you push it to its maximum range, which completely depends on the environment you're operating in. You won't just lose signal, it will keep creeping forwards and the feed will start to go a little bit fuzzy and at that point you can move forward yourself or move the rover back. And of course the great thing with using a rover rather than a drone is if you do lose signal or have any technical issues, nothing's going to go wrong, it's just going to stay exactly where it is. If people do intercept the rover, there's no need to worry because no data is stored on the rover itself. So let's talk about the payload options. Now payloads are compatible with both the rover and the drone. There's new connectors that work with the Saigen that allow you to connect some of the similar payloads to the drone that we've already looked at in the past. And those include the ones from Typhon Distraction. So you've got distraction capabilities, you've got flashbangs, dyes, smart water, there's also an LED spotlight option coming out and a speaker option, all of which are compatible with both the rover and the drone. And the great thing is, that's no longer a cradle that needs to be manually connected. It's a clip-on device, so you can clip it onto the Saigen, or you can take it off and clip it straight onto the drone. There's no messing around, no tools needed, very easy to do in the field. Now the idea with this is that it's not going to be its own standalone product. It's going to work as part of this larger ecosystem of internal tactical capabilities. We envisage most of our customers using both these products at the same time, so drone and rover. The idea being you send the rover in for more covert operations where you need longer endurance, you need to be quiet, you need to be stealthy. And you send in the drone where you've got environments the rover can't operate in. So if you've got the simplest example being stairs or steps that the rover can't traverse, you'll use the drone. In a lot of operations, you'll probably use both at the same time. So this has been an introduction to the Sky Hero Saigen Rover. If you have any further questions or want any more information, please do get in touch at sales at or give us a call in the office at any time. Thanks so much for watching.